What's up everybody? This is Workshop 1776. I'm Jack. Stanley's on the ground. Uh, today we're drinking the Lost Abbey Farmhouse Lager. And we're building this. My wife and I noticed recently that we spend too much time on our cell phones. So we decided to, or she came up with the idea to make a, like a, a phone lockbox of sorts. So whenever we come home, we just take our phones out of our pockets and put them, put them inside that lockbox and we leave them there so we can spend more time with our family. I'm sure like a lot of you, you know, you always have your phone in your pocket or on the couch next to you and any time that you're even slightly bored at all, you, uh, you just get your phone out and check Instagram or Facebook or whatever it is that you do. So we thought that if it wasn't right next to us, then it would be much harder for us to, to just instinctively check our phones. So I made a specific place for our phones to go when we come home every day. And we've had it up for, I don't know, four or five days now and it's worked great. So I definitely recommend this if you're one of those people who thinks that they spend too much time on their phone, just have a dedicated place for it. And this was a pretty good project to kind of bring that, you know, to like make that a reality. So the other part of this project is an entryway shelf uh, with magnets underneath for your keys and then like a shelf on the top with um, you know so you can put your, your knife and your sunglasses and wallet and all that other stuff up at the top. Uh, this is actually the third iteration of uh, we call it the mountain shelf that I've made. Um, just we like the mountain part of it that is not necessary at all. <laughs> you could do whatever you wanted but we call it the mountain shelf. So uh, let's get started. This project was made almost entirely out of redwood two bikes that Redwood 2x6 is from Home Depot. Um, and then like a little bit of a clear acrylic for the like front, like little window thing for the lockbox. So before I started, I kind of sketched out what I wanted to do just on some graph paper. Took some rough measurements um, for the, the space it was going into. And uh, then I just, once I had, uh, bought the wood, I cleared all the, the uh, staples or, actually yeah, I cleared all the staples out of it just so I didn't hit it with, one, with the uh, blade and transferred those, the measurements onto the wood so I could take them over to the miter saw and cut them to the length. Well, one, th one thing that I didn't realize uh, when I first started woodworking is that most of the construction lumber, actually most lumber in general that isn't, you know, hardwoods, um, the ends are usually pretty beat up. So it's a good idea to kind of just trim the end off real quick. You only have to take off a little bit of material, but it'll give you a nice 90 degree, nice like flush 90 degree end. So um, that'll help with you know future cuts and stuff like that. But it's important to do that before you measure, <laughs> before you measure um, you know your your length because you're going to cut a little bit of that off. So I always take it over to the miter saw, cut the edge off, bring my tape with me, and then measure from there, and then make the mark and cut. Um, I talk a lot about stop locks. Uh, I didn't use one in this case just because I only needed a couple. I needed two. Uh, like two or three or four maybe pieces that were the same width or same yeah same width so what I ended up doing was just take cutting one measuring it making sure it was the right size and then I would use the same piece every time and I would just lay it down you know marry up the edges and then make a mark on that side um, it's really important to use that same piece every time uh, don't use that piece you just cut because if you had made whatever kind of error you could compound that error over four or five pieces Right here, um, I'm just trimming the rounded edges off uh, so it's a little bit flatter. So this is a good example. This is one of the pieces I cut off. You can see, maybe, you can see by looking at this thing that this edge right here is like the factory edge. It's where like, um, you know, this is what all four edges look like, all four corners of it. It's, it's rounded over. Um, a lot of construction lumbers like that, two by fours, two by sixes, everything like that. Um, and it makes gluing stuff up much more difficult because there's a little bit of like, I don't know, it's not, it's not as like tight as a 90 as like something like that would be. So um, what I ended up doing was just taking, you know, a 16th of an inch, like half the blade, maybe even an eighth of an inch, um, just to take off that rounded edge. You don't, you, you don't lose a whole lot of material, um, but it'll make your life a lot easier when you're going to like glue stuff up or like marry up those pieces. So I had those four pieces and I was just kind of getting the layout. I, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to have any like giant knots or, um, you know, like anything, you know, funky looking in uh, the, the parts you're going to see very much. So I, there, there was real, one really big knot. So I put that one, um, it's going to be inside the box. So you're never going to see it. 
then I just glued up these two pieces um, <clears throat> using a type on two and I use a little bit of just like sacrificial um, like pieces between the wood and the clamps just so I didn't mar the wood at all just because redwood's pretty soft and I didn't want the you know clamps to crush it uh, I sanded this thing down quite a lot because it's gonna be hand it's like a high traffic kind of you know you're gonna have your hands all over it so I didn't want any slivers or anything like that so I sanded it a few times during you know making this to make sure I didn't miss any spots uh, you know or things that were gonna be harder to sand once it was all assembled or something like that the plan was just to use glue here for all the all the assembly but after I, I was just too impatient so what I ended up doing was I'd let it dry for like I don't know 30 minutes or something like that and then I'd start you know sanding it down or getting the next piece ready and it, it just wasn't fully cured so a couple of times I, I ended up like popping off some of the pieces and uh, I, I went back and reinforced everything. There's a spot right there. Just knocked it off the whole thing. So I went back and just reinforced everything with screws. And that way, <coughs> um, you, can, you can just keep working. You can keep going. You don't have to wait for it to dry. I was, I was, really, I was originally trying to uh, just do it with glue so you wouldn't have any of the hardware showing, but um, this is just for me and I don't think the hardware looks bad at all. So. That's one thing that can help you out. Put glue in there and then add some screws. Or brad nails. I didn't, I didn't have any brad nails that were long enough um, for this. So that's why I use some. I think I used two inch screws. Use a straw trick and a wet paper towel trick for the squeeze out. That's a really hard spot to get to because it's inside the box itself. So I wouldn't be able to get my sander in there or it'd be difficult to get anything else in there. So I made sure to get a little, the glue was still wet. Um, and then you basically just like kind of crimp a straw a little bit and put it along the crease and it gets most of it out and then I use the <coughs> I just used a wet paper towel kind of folded it up a little bit and shoved it in the corner and it got the rest of it so Worked out pretty well Okay, so if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I really like using magnets um, as like fasteners fasteners, I guess uh, I don't know like a like a makeshift kind of lock for um, like door hinges, like hinged doors and stuff like this. So what I'm doing here is I'm just picking a spot that I'm going to put the magnet. And these are just rare earth magnets from Amazon. I'll have a link down in the description. Thank you. Thank you, computer. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just marking out a spot there. And here I am creating the like the the front of the door. So like there's a little door that goes on the front of this thing. Um, so I used butt joints just to make the box, uh, but I wanted the front of the door to look a little bit nicer, so I decided I was gonna go with mitered corners, make it look more like a picture frame, um, and it, they just like look nicer to me. I mean, it doesn't matter, you could do butt joints here too, but I thought it would look a little bit nicer if, we, if I took the time to do some mitered edges. I'm using that um, piece of MDF right there because the, the throat on my mitered, on my, Miter, miter saw? My miter saw is pretty wide, so I didn't, the, and the pieces are really thin, so I didn't want any like chip out or anything like that. So I just grabbed an old piece of MDF and then put it up against the fence, and I used that as like a kind of a sacrificial, um, like throat, I guess you would call it. Then I took, so I purposefully left the um, 45s, or I purposefully cut them on the miter saw just a little bit long so I could get them really, really accurate with my belt sander. So that's what I ended up doing. I just cut them, left, and then I just sanded up to the line uh, to make sure I had it the perfect length. It's a really easy way to get smaller pieces to the exact same length. Okay, now I'm just measuring out. What am I doing here? Oh yeah, so now I'm. I wanted the I wanted the acrylic to be recessed into the back of the like door part. Just think of it as like a, a really wide picture frame, wide and skinny, wide and skinny, long and skinny, I don't know, picture frame. And um, I didn't have a rabbiting bit that was, that could handle such small material, like such thin material. I think that was only about like less than a quarter of an inch. It was probably like an eighth of an inch actually. Um, and so what I ended up doing was just running it over my table saw blade. And it was kind of the same deal with the table saw that it is with the miter saw. That's why I'm using the sacrificial, I don't know, tabletop? Sure. 
right there, uh, and I you just use a plunge cut. So basically, what you do there is you find a, you just get a sacrificial piece of MDF that you know you can put all the way up against your your table saw fence, get that all set and everything like that where you need it, and then you lower your blade all the way, start the blade, make sure you have really good downward pressure and your fingers are nowhere near where the blade's gonna come up, and then you slowly raise the blade into the MDF, and then it just creates a little bit, you know, it's just like a little, it just pops out the top, and that way you have a, a very flat, even surface you can run the, um, run your pieces over. Um, you also have to make sure that you're not gonna, have, like the riving knife in the back, can't, it's not going to cut anything, so you need to make sure that the MDF is not going to come in contact with the top of that riving knife, which I've done before, and it's a very scary thing because <laughs> the blade and the riving knife contacted at the same time, so it lifts up and it has the propensity to kick back really bad. So make sure you're not going to hit the riving knife. So here I'm just cutting the rabbits on all the pieces, and then I flip them vertically to do the same thing. This is real sketchy. I don't recommend doing it this way. I would. I couldn't think of any other way to do it. It was fine for the long pieces, but the short pieces I ended up stopping and like trying to figure out a better way to do it. I didn't, I just did the dangerous way. Don't do the dangerous way, it's sketchy. Super sketch. All right, so that's what it looks like. So now I'm measuring out the exact dimensions of the um, acrylic. So I can go over to the table saw. Acrylic cuts really easily on the table saw. Um, you just have to make sure that you have downward, because it's so much lighter um, and less rigid than wood is, obviously, you need to make sure you have really good downward pressure on both sides of the blade. Um, and your hands are obviously nowhere near the blade. You know, when you start cutting it, it'll wanna like kinda kick up. It'll wanna like kick up on like one side. So uh, definitely make sure you have, you know, either like um, push sticks or something like that that'll help you maintain pressure on both sides of the blade so you don't have it like flare up and then it'll chip out real bad too. Um, so this acrylic is clear. Uh, I bought this at Home Depot in, in like a two by four foot sheet, I think. Uh, I think it was like 15 bucks or something like that. This is clear. It comes clear. And I, it clearly would have been fine to see what was in there, but I thought it would be kind of cool to have like a frosted glass kind of look. So what I ended up doing was just taking my orbital sander with 320 grit sandpaper in it. And um, I just sanded it for, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds on each side. And it, it frosted up really nice uh, and it was super even. Uh, you just got to make sure when you're sanding it that you don't spend too much time in one spot. So because it'll get a lot more frosted than the air, other areas. So just really even, evenly go back and forth and it looks like frosted glass was pretty cool for really cheap and you don't have to deal with cutting glass, which is always a pain for me anyway. I decided to secure it to the wood by using a combination of like a rapid, the DAP rapid fuse, which, which, um, which will cure, which will hold in like 15 seconds or something like that, it's really fast. And then for like long-term strength, I use the Gorilla Glue, clear glue stuff. Gorilla, Gorilla Glue, I don't remember what it is, but it doesn't expand, so that's what I wanted. I didn't want it to like foam out of the top. It's the clear one, whatever that one is. Use that. Um, it doesn't expand, so like the it won't like foam out the top or anything, you won't see anything from the front. If I could do that over again, I would have stained I would have stained it before I put the acrylic in there because now once I went back to go stain it, I obviously couldn't get any stain uh, under between the acrylic and the wood, so there's like kind of a funky looking, you know, it's a lighter color and you can see the glue and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> I also made the the door portion too thin. And I'll, I'll kind of explain what I'm talking about later. But if I could do it again, I would have made it a little bit thicker, maybe, you know, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch thick. Um, and that I'll, I'll tell you why in a little bit, but. Uh, okay, so now I, I was looking at the, the box on top of the, the piece that I was mounting to the wall, and I realized that like, it was super chunky. Like, I, I like the chunky, kind of like farmhouse, real rustic looking, big pieces of stuff, of like, you know, wall art and stuff like that, but when it was that big chunky box on that big chunky background, it was just too thick. So what I decided to do was get my planer out and I just ran the, the back plate part of it. I ran it through my planer a bunch of times and I took off, I don't know, maybe like 
I don't even know how much it was. Half an inch or so, probably. Maybe three quarters of an inch. So I just made that back piece just a little bit thinner and it, it didn't look so like bulky. Like I said at the beginning of the video, we've had, we always had like mountains on our shelves for some reason. I, I think I saw it on Pinterest years ago when I made one. Um, and like this, like I said, this is my third one. So I just, I drew out some mountains and then cut it out on my bandsaw. And what I couldn't get to with my bandsaw, I just used my jigsaw to knock out the, the mountains. And this, this can be, you don't have to do mountains, you don't have to do anything. You can just have like a, you know, square background. Um, or you could just forego that part altogether and just have nothing. You just have the box on the wall and it'd be fine. It, it served the same purpose. You'd still have the shelf, a box, and then the underneath for your magnets or whatever. But we like mountains, so we went with it for the third time. <clears throat> Sand it again. Now I'm just making sure that everything is like set up the way I like it. And then I took some 320 grit and just hand sanded the edges just to break the corners a little bit. Because like I said, I, this is going to be handled. Your hands are going to go up top, in the box, underneath. All that stuff, so I wanted to make sure they were nice and smooth. <laughs> uh, so right there is one of my, that's what where I was being impatient. The mountain portion of that was not fully like glued onto the bottom part, the bottom part. Like so the two halves of the backboard weren't completely like dry yet. And I accidentally just like popped it off. So what I went back and did is just added some pocket holes. They're they're really useful, they're really fast. I like them. Craig pocket hole jig, added more glue some screws in there and then I just you know then I can keep working and I didn't want to have to wait <clears throat> so same thing with the box now I'm just putting the box onto the back plate and this one I did actually plan on adding screws to it just because it was you know it's hanging off of the front and there's gonna be a lot of weight on it so uh, I added glue I just placed it on there added glue and then drove in some three inch screws from the back to make sure that it was on there tight enough and then I left the clamps on I think I left that one on overnight just to make sure that um, it was fully dried before I messed with it. So I originally thought that when I put the plexiglass in, or the acrylic, into into like the frame thing we made for the for the door, that that was going to be strong enough to hold, like to kind of uh, like keep the mitered edges together and stuff like that. And it was, but since since the acrylic only went about halfway up the joint. I, I realized that like the, the edges, like the tips of it were kind of like not, you know, either like moving apart and stuff like that. So what I ended up doing was getting some of the sawdust from when I cut all this stuff, I like guess redwood sawdust, and throwing it on my mat and then like squirting some glue in there, some wood glue, made like a sawdust wood glue paste. And then I just shoved it into the corner, like used my thumb, like push it into the corners, like into the crease between the, the joints. That's a really good way to get like a, it's like a wood filler slash glue compound uh, that you can you can do. And then later once it's dry, you can just sand it down and it just fills the crease and there's no like obvious, you know, seams or anything like that. I mean, you can see the seams, but. Okay, while I was drying, I used the uh, dark walnut stain that I use on like a lot of my projects. I like the look of this, especially on redwood. If you use dark walnut on pine, like just the yellow pine, it looks very, it gets really, really yellowy, but on the redwood, um, you know, construction lumber stuff, it, it comes out really, really cool. It's like a dark, like deep red. Now I'm just sanding down that like wood glue, uh, sawdust mixture that I use to strengthen the corners a little bit. And the idea on this was I wanted to have like a little drawer pull at the top with hinges at the bottom so you can just pull and then the whole thing would fall down and um, you can put your phone or whatever in there. So right now I'm just measuring out where I wanted to put the knob for the drawer pull. And then just drilling a hole. The hardware that came with the drawer pull was way too long. Like I said, this is all this this like drawer front, you know, picture frame thing is only about an eighth of an inch thick. So I think the and so, so what I ended up doing was just taking the hardware, put them in some vice grips, uh, more gloves obviously because sparks are going everywhere. And then I just took it over to my disc sander and just um, laid it flat on the like bed or whatever and pushed it into the disc sander and it just grinded down the screw until it was you know, the appropriate length. Uh, one thing I did notice about this, and I've seen in other videos, is once you grind it down, it kind of like mushrooms out the top of that thing. So 
a really good way to, to make it easier on yourself to get a, to be able to thread it again is if you put a, a little a nut onto it and then grind it down and then back that nut all the way off and it'll like clean all the threads out so you can more easily thread it into the knob or whatever so it's not so it's such a mess at the end of it. Okay here um, I am marking out the spots for the hinges um, and because how thin that little door portion is the, I knew the screws weren't going to do anything. They were going to go through the other side, they are going to get in the way of everything, and um, uh, they weren't going to like hold it very well at all just because there wasn't going to be much like meat in the, or, you know, much of the screw in the actual wood. So what I decided to do was after I mortised it out, I was going to just use that same Gorilla Glue and DAP Rapid Fuse combo to keep the hinges in place. But then I did the same trick that I did with the hardware for the knob, like the drawer pole at the belt sander, and just ground down the screws so there was like barely anything on there. And so the screws are purely aesthetic, like they don't they don't hold anything at all. And all the hinges are being held to the door portion at least um, with like super, you know, Gorilla Glue. So that was a good workaround for having a piece that's that small. I didn't really think about the logistics of having a, like a super thin piece of material but it worked okay. <clears throat> and I stained this part. I was originally worried that getting stain on the acrylic would mess it up, but I, I painted a little bit of it just to see, like on a, you know, an off cut, and it didn't do anything to it, so I just went for it and then put it all over it and wiped it off and it was fine. Okay, so I wanted magnets, so there are already magnets inset into the like main main body, like the box itself, and I wanted magnets on the door portion of it just to make sure it was at a really good, you know, magnetic connection. What I ended up doing was just setting the magnets on. I also wanted to make sure that I was putting the right like polarity of the magnet on there. So a good way to do all of these things and get it in the right spot on the door so it attaches easily and it's in a natural place for it is if you just set the magnets on top of each other, like uh, one on top of each side, and then put a little bit of the glue on there, you just shut the door on top of it, and that way, um, and then I put clamps on it overnight just because I, I didn't want them to, you know, like slide around or anything like that. Um, but that way you know that the magnets are on the right spot on the door, they're gonna adhere to the other magnet. Um, so after looking at the box, now that it's like almost, you know, completely done, I decided to add a little bit of like contrast and depth to it. So I went over to the table saw and just cut off about an eighth inch of material from some uh, select pine. I chose pine because it's a really light color in contrast to the dark stain that I used for the redwood. And now I'm just making like smaller little mountains that are gonna go in like the foreground of our little picture we're painting here. Um, and. <laughs> the idea for that was originally to hide the screws, but I forgot that's what I wanted to do. So I got excited and just, I used that rapid fuse stuff again and just tossed them on there. I messed around with some configurations and then um, just put a little bit like a dab on, on the back of each one and then held it down for a couple seconds. That'll hold fine. Uh, so now I'm adding magnets to the bottom, the underside of the box. And I'm just using my Carpenter Square here to um, like get even measurements in between because I wanted two rows. I want like a front row and a back row. And then uh, I just made marks that are the same, like distance apart. I think I did three inches in between the screws. Use the DAP rapid fuse again. I This is kind of an experiment. I wanted to see, uh, I didn't want them to slide around at all. So I thought the fast drying stuff would work a lot better. I didn't want to have to figure out a way to like clamp these down overnight or anything like that. Um, and like I said, we've had it up for four or five days now and I, none of them have fallen off and we've been using them. So I think the DAP rapid fuse works great and if, if one falls off, then I'll go back and add it, or you know, go put the, um, the Gorilla Glue on there. Uh, one thing that's worth noting is on the first and second shelves I made, I think, no, just the first one, I recessed these magnets into the bottom of it just because I thought, for some reason, I thought that was a good idea. It's a bad idea, and the reason why is because if you're 
you can't see them. So you're like feeling up underneath there to find like where you're gonna put your keys. If you can't feel the magnet and you're not anywhere close to it, you're, you're never gonna find it. So having the actual magnet stick out is a lot better for like use it, actually using this thing down the road. So I, I wouldn't recess them in there and that way you can kind of just feel and be like, oh, it's over here, whatever. <laughs> so this is like a rubber mat thing that I used for an outdoor project a while ago. It's been rolled up in like in the corner of my garage for like nine months. But I thought about it and I was like, oh, we're gonna put a cell phone in a wooden box and it's just gonna be, if we are getting phone calls or texts or whatever, it's just gonna be vibrating inside this box and making a really, making a racket. So I decided to add this little like rubber mat to it just to kind of dampen that like vibration so it's not so like noisy. And what it, it, because it had been rolled up for so long, it had this like bad, really bad curl. So I decided that maybe like heat would, would help flatten it out. And I just got my propane torch out. What do you know? <laughs> it worked great. Flattened out in like, I don't know, five seconds. It was great. Use that DAP rapid fuse and just tossed it back in there. All right, so now that this thing's like pretty much done, I'm just going back again. Um, now, and since it's been stained and all the other stuff, uh, I went back with some 320 grit. I just folded up the sanding pad, and then I just went over kind of the high points. There, I wanted to sand it again just because we're gonna, it's, it's gonna be like handled a lot. But I also know that if you go over like a, a wood that's been stained, you can get like highlights onto the edges and stuff like that. So I did that on the mountains and um, just like kind of the, a lot of the corners just to give it a little bit more like farmhouse, like rustic look. It doesn't do a whole lot, but, um, and I don't know how, if you can even see that on camera, but it adds a little bit of like highlights and distress, I guess, to the to the edges, so. I liked it, I thought it looked good. So this, um, where I'm putting this is actually right through this door right here behind me. <clears throat> and that's, this is like the main entrance in our house. Obviously I'm in our garage, so. This is driving me nuts. Watch it like one off. Okay, uh, so what I did here was I preloaded the screws. Uh, I think I missed this, the part where I, I put the screws in there because it was like bad footage or something. But I did three, I just opened the box up because there's nowhere you're gonna, I didn't want, you're not gonna see them if that like door shut. And I did three screws, like one in the middle and then two on each side from the inside of the box. And then I preloaded those screws um, to where they're sticking out of the back like that much, not a whole lot, just maybe you know an eighth to a quarter of an inch sticking out the back. I put a level on the box itself, and then I made sure it was level. I got it on the wall, made sure it was level, and then I just like pushed so that those screws would you know make little indents into the wall. And then I knew where I, I needed to drill for my drywall anchors. So I went out and got my drill, drilled the drywall anchors. Um, and this was <laughs> this is a really sketchy part because my son was sleeping upstairs. Uh, I was like, oh, I hope I don't wake him up, but he slept. He's a champ. I had to use my, <laughs> I got I got one screw in um, before I realized that I needed to change out the the uh, drill bit because it wasn't long enough, and I had my other one, but I had to use my head to to like hold it up so it didn't just like fall all the way out. Um, one thing that, to note is, so I put the screws in, and I was like, oh, this will be fine. Um, but since they were so low, there was a, it wouldn't like kind of it wouldn't like suck into the wall, so it had a little bit of wobble to it. So what I ended up doing was adding um, two more screws, still inside the box, but I, I like split the difference of the of the like gaps in between the outside and inside screw, and I went all all as high as I could that was inside the box. So it was kind of like two rows of screws, and that worked great. So um, I didn't film that because I was frustrated that it wasn't working. Yep, so you can just take your keys and your wallet. I had a little key ring on my wallet so mine fits on there. Put your phone in the box. And that's it, all your stuff in one place. You won't lose anything, hopefully. Um, okay, so. A couple things that I would have done differently, I'm gonna lay them out again. I would have made the front box part, I would have made it a little bit thicker. Like I said that I think that's about an eighth of an inch. I would have done at least a quarter of an inch. Just because when you pull that little drawer pull out, there's because it's so thin, there's like a little bit of flex 
in it, it's fine. It doesn't matter at all. It's just kind of annoying for me. Like I'll pull it out and it like kind of flexes and then the magnets release. Um, it's fine. It is okay. I just, if I were to do it again, I wouldn't have made it so thin. I would have stained the, like the whole frame portion before I put the acrylic in there. And I would have gotten bigger hinges or like nicer hinges or something or I really liked how the hardware all matched and it kind of had like a you know the knob in the front and then the two hinges on the bottom so that's why I left it on the outside um, to make my life easier I could have just done this on the inside of it and then made you know made it a little bit more room for it to like swing but I liked how it looked and it's it's functional it works fine so they're just not as clean as they could have been um, anything else I would have done differently? No, I think that's it. If you guys want to do something like this, I highly recommend it. I would definitely put it somewhere that is going to get, you know, it's like a highly trafficked area somewhere, like right when you walk in the door or something like that. Um, but it helps a lot not just to, like, just to not have your phone in your pocket all the time. So, um, I hope you guys liked it. I think, I mean, that's it for the video. So let's talk about the channel. So the channel is doing really well. We're almost at 3,000 subscribers. Um, so we're just keep going up and I think we're like 29, 2800 or something like that. Um, so we're just up and up and up and up. Um, that's awesome. So Patreon's been going really, really well. Um, we've got two new uh, patrons this month, Brandon Watson and Rich Nicholson. So I wanted to say thank you to you guys. Uh, that really, really helps me make the videos that like helps me make these videos because uh, like I said most of these things I make they're experiments of things that I, I mean you know I, I mess them up all half the time so I don't like feel comfortable <laughs> selling them to people or that like your guys' patronage really helps um, just so everybody knows the top tier of, of patreon which Brandon is the only member of right now is I'm gonna mail a project um, it's gonna be like a random drawing of who gets it, but he's the only one in it right now. So as it stands right now, Brandon's gonna get, you know, one of the things I make in these videos once a month. So, so congratulations, you're you're gonna win something every month. We started Teespring, so we got shirts and stuff now. This is one of them, black on black. It's a good one. So stay tuned for our um, first project series. Uh, not all the projects we're gonna, not all the next videos are gonna be first project videos. I think I'm gonna start like sprinkling them in there. Like I'll probably do two or three of them and then like a regular project one too, just so if that's not something you're into, you won't be, you know, completely bored. I think we're gonna make a blanket ladder and a bottle opener first. Um, and then I have a handful of other things I wanna make too, just for, you know, people who are starting out. Thanks everybody, and uh, I think it's time for beer review. The Lost Abbey Farmhouse Lager. I like it. <laughs>